Aloha, you're watching F5 On Demand. I'm Senior Technical Marketing Manager Peter Silva. We're at Gartner Data Center 2013 at the Venetian here in Vegas. We're in booth 202, if you're at the show, please come on by and visit us. Over the last couple of weeks, we released our F5 synthesis, which is our architectural vision for software-defined application services. And right behind me, you can see the list. It includes the high-performance services fabric, the intelligent services orchestration, and then the simplified business models for our customers. And part of the reference architectures, or part of F5 synthesis, was creating a number of reference architectures, kind of as proof points, as customer scenarios, for F5 Synthesis, and we're lucky to have one of my favorite people here at F5. He's Senior Technical Marketing Manager, David Holmes. Hey Dave, how's it going? It's going awesome, Peter. It's always good to see you, Dave. I love hanging out with you, man. <laughs> we're on a panel later today, come see us. Right on. You might not know this, but um, Dave's been here quite a while, I've been here quite a while, and probably like, Four years ago, we somewhat co-wrote a paper, right. even though we hadn't even really met. Yeah, that's exactly right. We wrote, uh, for a long time, it was the most popular paper yeah. at F5. It was a platform security paper, and people still read that today. It's like Elton John and Bernie Taupin, right? <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> So David actually put together a denial of service, the distributed the DDoS reference architecture. And I thought it'd be great to get Dave on camera to talk a little bit about DDoS since we get it, we see it in the media a lot these days, and maybe talk a little bit about how the DDoS reference architecture addresses some of those concerns that organizations have out there pertaining to these type of attacks. So, First, you've been around the world talking to a number of customers. Is DDoS really that big of a concern as, as a lot of media says that it is? You know, it is and it isn't. And I, I've been around the world two or three times or seven times, I don't even remember, talking specifically just about DDoS uh, with mostly global financials. And they're happy to tell me when they've been DDoS. You know, we had an attack last week or we had an attack last Tuesday or, or a year ago. People don't necessarily compile statistics about who, who it's happening to and all the time. Does that make sense? But it is a real problem, and everybody's really interested in it right now because it represents it represents the, the shutting down of their business, right? Yeah. It's not just an outage anymore, you're losing money. So it's, it's definitely top of mind for everybody that I talk to. And so what are some of the most common types of denial of service or distributed denial of service attacks? Because it can mean a whole slew of things. I mean, essentially just having the site not available for one, but what are some of the, some of the techniques or methods used to then generate a denial of service attack? Sure, we break it down into two, I would say there's two main categories, right? There's volumetric, which is really just sending more traffic than the, the ingress pipe can handle. Like I say, it's like, imagine a doorway and you try to have 100 people going through the door at the same time, right? It's just not going to work out. Right. And then there's more sophisticated asymmetric or application layer attacks, which are being smart about you know, turning a knob or chewing up a, a sending in a really difficult database query over and over and over again, maybe 100 times a second, and then taking down the database uh, in that way. And that's usually where F5 gets involved, is in these sort of more difficult to understand uh, attacks, which may or may not be over SSL, which your typical firewall won't handle. And so, and so as we keep handing the microphone back and forth to each other, which is cool, uh, how, are, how are companies dealing with this today? Like say if they have no F5 devices, how do they then deal with such, like, such attacks? Well, often they don't, which is why they're coming to talk to me. Um, but many times, I mean, everybody's an F5 customer, right? I mean, uh, 50 of the top 50 financials in the US are F5 customers. So um, typically I'm in there already talking and they already have an LTM. And then maybe they're looking at our AFM, right? Our advanced firewall manager um, to talk about how is this going to give me uh, both volumetric and asymmetric defenses. And so we have a diagram up, why don't we take okay. a step over, oh. Before I, before I, I did want to mention the importance of this reference architecture, right? Okay. So I would go to all these customers, biggest banks in the world, and I'd go in and I'd do my little story and they would love it and they'd say, David, I really like you know, what you're saying about DDoS, could you please leave us with a reference architecture? And we didn't have one for forever. So when, when the, the push for F5 synthesis came around to actually document the reference architecture, which I had in my head right. from talking to all these different banks and I know what they're doing and how they're building and what they want to build, it was a great opportunity to get the stuff down on paper and I, I can't believe how well it's been received. And they have been, it's been great actually. Yeah, so let's go take a look at it. Like a Today Show segment, we're going to move over to the monitor area. <laughs> <laughs> So, so walk us through this and tell us a little bit how the big IP handles such type of attacks. 
Sure, it's not just a big IP, it's actually an architecture, right? It's a reference architecture. So yeah. in this picture, and I hope you can see it pretty well, it's a two-tier DDoS mitigation architecture. There's a first tier here, which is a um, like your typical firewall with a simple load balancing and maybe your DNS, and this is a, a DDoS mitigation architecture for our global financial services, right? So you're, you have a first tier here, this is your typical security perimeter, and this is where you'd be mitigating your, your layer three, layer four attacks. And we'll have some customers that say, well I want to do some layer stuff here, right. or layer seven stuff here, and we'll say, no, 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 don't do that there. Do all the layer seven stuff at tier two. Now the reason this is important is when I go into a customer who has a really crack um, uh, security team, one of the first things they'll say is we worry about CPU around uh, how much CPU the layer seven uh, denial of service stuff requires. Right. And we really, we're not comfortable with how that seems to go up and down depending on what the attacks are. The beauty of the two tier mitigation architecture is that by, have, by putting all of that in tier two, you can scale it completely independently of tier one. So let's say you've, you've provisioned and sized your tier one just right, and it's good for the next two years, but you're not comfortable with the, CP, with the CPU load at tier two, uh, maybe you've done like an acquisition or your security policy is suddenly bigger, um, or your number of pages keep growing. Right. You can simply add more and more CPU, more and more compute, more and more WAF here at tier two, right? And so then one discussion that always comes up with customers, especially the financials is, well, where do I terminate SSL? The financials terminate it here at tier two, almost exclusively, except for one out of 100 who says, well, we do it here, okay. and you can do it here, um, and that's part of the reference architecture is that that works. For enterprises, it's like 50-50. They'll, they'll do SSL termination here because that's what the F5 is good at. Um, and then they maybe send it to um, an IDS or an IPS over here, uh, and then maybe re-encrypt it back here. So this is the reference architecture, and there's a white paper you can get from the F5 synthesis site uh, that describes exactly everything I told you and more. And so I would imagine the other thing that it does by, by you know, kind of doing the you know layer two through four stuff here in front and layer seven stuff back, if you put everything in front, now it's dealing with both like two through seven versus you know, cleaning some of this stuff at this point so that when the layer seven stuff hits the back end, it's even less intense, I would imagine. Yeah, that's definitely a use case. For example, there's uh, lots of small, medium business companies out there who are not by no stretch of the imagination, are they going to have like a two-tier DDoS mitigation right. architecture? They just want one box and they want non-standard pricing and they would like it you know, in a consolidated thing. And for them, uh, that's part of the reference architecture too. We'll consolidate it down and help them size it um, to put it all in a single device. But for the larger architectures, this is what they're building or this is what they want to build. And so the other thing is obviously denial of service attacks is, is a massive you know, flood of traffic, whatever that traffic might be. How do our boxes hold up under that heavy load? Kind of a nice softball <laughs> setup question for you, huh, Dave? That, that is a nice softball. The, uh, uh, the 5,000, 7,000, uh, and 10,000, and the Vibrion platforms all have custom hardware inside them that do nothing but look for DDoS vectors and then mitigate them. And the numbers on the, uh, the upper end boxes are just mind blowing. I saw, we announced some, one of our higher end boxes does like 640 gigs of DDoS traffic while still handling, I don't know, like another 100 gigs of normal traffic. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. It's like carrier grade DDoS. Like who even has a 640 gig pipe? But anyway, it's um, great stuff. You can see all that in the data sheets. Sure. Awesome stuff, Dave, boy. It's always fun chatting with you. Yeah, we go back a little while, so we just kind of catch up, yuck it up, and talk catch security, up. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff, so a little bit more about our distributed, or DDoS, distributed denial of service, uh, reference architecture from one of the security gurus here at F5, Dave Holmes. You can also follow him at on Twitter with at DHolmesF5. Right on. So, for Dave, and I got Courtney behind the lens, thank you Courtney, I'm Peter, and we're with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching.